Dr. Cook, it's such a pleasure to be able to sit down and talk with you on the 50th anniversary of the founding of the what is now, of course, the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of Child Health and Human Development, because not only were you there at the birth of this thing, but you were at least a midwife, if not more, to the, to wow. the beginning of the place. And so we really want to hear from you uh, what it was like at the beginning. How did this happen? How did, how did you all work to create such a thing? Well, it was one of these uh, very fortuitous circumstances. I was a good friend with Eunice Schreiber. And when the president was elected, uh, before he took office, they put together a task force to look at health and uh, social services mm -hmm. if for the new administration. And I got a telephone call one day asking me if I could serve on this task force. So we met at the Mayflower Hotel for the first time. And this was the period in between the election and the inauguration, or when was right. it? Right. Mm. It was right after the election. Mm. And uh, we met in the Mayflower Hotel. There were five of us. Uh, Wilbur Cohen was the chairman of the little group. Then we had to go up and see uh, Governor... Uh, Governor Ribikoff? Ribikoff, mm. right. And uh, he had been appointed uh, Secretary of Human Services. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wasn't a bit interested in my presentation. But Ted Sorensen was there huh. at the time. And Sorensen said, this is a great thing to balance our emphasis on medical care for the elderly. Huh. And so Sorensen took the message back to Kennedy, I guess, and they went ahead and developed some legislation, and I peddled it to people in Congress. And sure enough, I think the Congress voted almost unanimously to create the Institute. Eunice Shriver was a big help because the two people that come control all medical activities was Lister Hill in the Senate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and John Fogarty mm -hmm. in the House. Mm -hmm. So we went to see uh, John Fogarty and he had been prepped by the head of the NIH that this wasn't a good idea. Huh. And so at the start of the interviews he really showed that he wasn't in favor of it. Mm -hmm. and. Eunice, I can remember so well, Eunice said, do you have any retarded people in Providence? And, uh, of course, Fogarty said, well, of course, well, they need this help. So Fogarty jumped on the bandwagon. And then we went to see Lister Hill the same day. Mm -hmm. And Hill, when we went in, told him a little about it, said, anything Eunice wants, will do. So that's mm. how it became legislation. My feeling is that NICHD has made an enormous contribution to children in this country. And I think to medicine in general, mm. what you do with a child seems to make an enormous difference in his life. 